Hello, good afternoon. I want you to imagine, just imagine uh, if we humans could hibernate, if we could go into winter sleep, what would the world then look like? <laughs> Very differently from now. In those areas where people uh, live, uh, where te outside temperature drops below 15 uh, centigrades, that's indicated here in the black areas, people would sleep five to seven months per year. And the way we are distributed across the globe, this means that three quarters of us would hibernate. Four and a half billion people who don't need food, water, consumer goods for half of the year. We would massively cut down on our use of fossil fuels. Needed to, need, needed to heat our homes in winter. It's good news for the world. Our ecological footprint would become very small. Now, the time we spend in hibernation, we just get back afterwards. So here you see the life expectancy of a 10 years Dutch girl nowadays. It's between 80, 90 years. But if she were to hibernate, she would live up to 175 years and, for instance, give birth to a child at her 64th birthday. Now, this may all sound very appealing to you. Humans in hibernation, they would live in a completely different world. A world in which they would happily sleep through the dangers and harsh conditions of winter. I'm interested in hibernation for a very different reason. I'm a medical doctor and I was trained as an anesthesiologist. Anesthesiologist. Yeah? That's right. That is the person who puts you to sleep before an operation. But much more importantly, I am the guy who guards your bodily functions throughout the operation. I maintain your body temperature, I adjust your blood pressure, and I take care of your ventilation. Yeah. <laughs> so hibernation and anesthesia. Do you start to see the connection? No wonder that when I became, uh, uh, when I moved from the clinical care to research, I start thinking about hibernation. I ask myself, would it be possible to put humans into hibernation? Or just organs? Or some of their specific cells? Would that provide a better anesthesia? So for me, the real question is, can we exploit the secrets of hibernation for medicine? And I believe we can. Let me tell you why. First, I'll tell you a little bit about hibernation. Why do animals hibernate? Well, basically, to survive. To survive the cold, the shortage of food, and to avoid predators. But in Africa, Animals also hibernate to avoid food shortage and avoid predators. But there they are struggling with the dry season. In fact, you find hibernators all across the globe and in all parts of the animal kingdom. Before you go into hibernation, most animals fatten up. And you see a picture here of a squirrel fattening up. That's an excellent idea. Because you have your fuel at hand, and fat is a very good insulator and will shield you from the cold. Now, these animals increase up to 50% in body weight during summer. They even make themselves diabetic to become heavily obese. Imagine we would do that. Yeah? Increase body weight 50% in summer. Guess that would pretty much end 
the sales of shorts and bikinis. Eh? <laughs> okay, animals are obese and diabetic, yet they suffer none of the consequences often encountered in humans, like blocked arteries because of arteriosclerosis. Um, the key of hibernation, though, is not fattening up. The key of hibernation is that the animals cut back on their need for food. How do they do it? Very simple. They just turn off the heat. That is the heart of hibernation. Animals suppress their metabolism, that's indicated here by the blue uh, area, and as a result of that, their body temperature slowly decreases to the temperature of the surroundings. As you may know, there are no Nobel Prizes in biology. But if there were, you could win one by solving this pretty simple question. How do hibernators suppress their metabolism? Nobody knows. There's a lot of fascinating stuff going on in hibernation. These are recordings of the body temperature of four European ground squirrels at our enclosures at the University of Groningen. They beautifully show that the animals are not cold throughout winter. No, they alternate between periods of suppressed metabolism uh, and low body temperature, they are called torpor, and very brief uh, periods of rapid rewarming called arousals. So why do these animals spend so much energy on regularly uh, heating up all the way? It's an unresolved mystery. Nobody knows. And I think solving this, that mystery would be another reason to institute a Nobel Prize in biology. That's, that's my secret agenda, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I see people nodding. Yeah. Crazy things happen during hibernation. Here I put together a table of the animal I work most uh, with, that's uh, the golden hamster, and it shows that in torpor, these animals come to an almost complete standstill. Their heartbeat and ventilation is down to just 3% of normal. And they live on very low levels of blood pressure, 30% of normal. And then comes the arousal, and what they do is sort of swing to the other extreme. It's like they're on 10 Red Bulls right after awakening. I must admit, when I first saw these data, learned about the physiological changes in hibernation, I was astonished. These are conditions a human would never survive. Well, maybe one cycle or two, if you're lucky. And the amazing thing is, they do not show any organ damage. It's the absence of this organ damage that fascinated me most. Why do the animals do not show organ damage? And that's what I've worked on for the past five years. Boy, have we learned a lot in those five years. We learned that hibernation is nothing at all like coming to a standstill. Organs of hibernators do show major, major changes in torpor. Actually, the changes resemble those encountered in human disease. Their lungs look like asthmatics, their brain is early Alzheimer's, their vessel just look aged. But comes the arousal, they quickly reverse these changes and everything is back to normal again. What are the secrets that make that these animals can sustain 
these periods of cold and reheat? Well, we revealed a few, and I'm going to share them with you. First, hibernators make specific compounds, compounds that protect their cells. There's good news. The compounds also work in non-hibernators, including human cells. Secondly, the large drop in body temperature by itself causes activation of additional protective mechanisms. There's even more good news. This also works in non-hibernators. So remember me, the anesthesiologist wanting to protect your organs? Now this sounds like a strategy to me. Combining the compounds and cooling may just do the trick of protecting your organs. And while your organs are protected, your heartbeat is low, your blood pressure is low, that's good, you will not bleed out easily. Your immune system is down, that's good, you will not respond to the damage inflicted by the surgeon cutting you up. Just imagine in what ways we could use this magical mix of compounds and cooling. We could safeguard trauma patients in the ambulance. We could preserve organs for transplantation. Or we could buy time for people with stroke or myocardial infarction. Is this all our furry friends, the hibernators, can teach us? Actually, no. Hibernators lay down most of winter. They are immobile, yet they do not suffer from uh, thrombosis, muscle atrophy, or loss of bone mass. Such in contrast to humans who are in a hospital bed or up in space for just a couple of weeks. There are so many fascinating things to hibernation that I often wonder what area of medicine would not benefit from disclosing its mechanisms. I could give many more examples, but I think the final question that is in your mind is, will humans ever be able to hibernate? Well, not in the true sense of the word, fattening up in summer and hibernating in winter. But I believe that we can tap in to the mechanisms of hibernation and use that for the benefit of man. The reason is very simple. Hibernation deals with the key of life, body metabolism, the chain of chemical reactions that's fueling all life on Earth. Controlling metabolism is controlling life. Exploiting hibernation uh, in the way I told you for the benefit of man is just one great example of taking advantage of the power of evolution. If you come to think of it, nature has found already many creative solutions for the problems we face as humans. These solutions are out there, and you can grab them. All you have to do is look. Thank you very much. <laughs>